Hello, people. I'm back again. It is Wednesday. Uh, wow, we had a wonderful uh, day yesterday. I rested. Uh, oh, my God, I don't have my picture on. Oh, my God. Okay. I rested. Oh, my picture won't come up. Oh, what is wrong, babe? Oh, it's there. Oh, wow. I'm telling you, I'm still learning this stuff, so bear with me. Um, yeah, we was out uh, uh, last night. We ended uh, the Passover feast and unleavened bread. Had a wonderful time. Did another communion and just thanking the Lord, praising his name for all the things he's doing and what he's going to do. And I'm going to continue today uh, with my video. Uh, so I love the fish on the screen. I'll uh, remind you of fishes of men coming from Matthew. Um, Matthew 419, come and follow me and I will make you fishers of men. So uh, thank you for that picture so much from coming from uh, Uganda there from my friend, uh, my evangelist brother, uh, Tom Wine. He sent this to me. And um, I'm going to be talking about a few of the other people over in India today and uh, Ramaru over in India and William and uh, Uganda uh, and a little bit of Raja and then, um, Tom Wine, uh, also. And then I'll come back and do some other brothers later, but we have a lot of people are uh, working missions over in these countries. And this is where all your funds are going to when you send in money to help them with materials they may need, like laptops and smartphones and, um, food, most of all food. They having a real hard time uh, trying to eat over in Africa right now. Very dry. I uh, haven't had rain for almost six months or more. And and so people are really in dire need. Uh, the young people there don't have jobs. They can't work. <clears throat> so it's very, very hard. Uh, I know my brother over in uh, Tom Wine, the one that sent the picture here, he was telling me that the brothers can't work and also they trying to get gardens. They want to have gardens and they need material fertilizers and different things. It's just a very hard life for them right now over there. And it's been going on for many, many years. As you know, a lot of them have been persecuted uh, against uh, a lot of the Christians over in India as well. A lot of persecutions going on in India right now. They cannot uh, talk about the leaders over there. They could be arrested at any time. So it's just been a lot of things happening. <clears throat> I'm going to have been looking at the news today. I'm just going to post some things down below. Uh, coming from the double quakes we had yesterday. I know one was in Peru, and I can't remember the other country right now. It's just not on my mind. Uh, but I will post some of these links down below. Um, and also, um, thank you so much for your comment yesterday, uh, Rachel, about Stephen Anderson video on the rapture. I know a lot of people have been wondering about the rapture, the pre-trib rapture, the mid-trib rapture, rapture, whatever. So he really covers it, really. Me and my husband listen to it Sabbath, and I'm telling you, he really covers it on every detail, Biblic biblically. You can go and look it up in Scripture. He give you the Scriptures, and it do not have any proof whatsoever that we're going to have a pre-trib, okay? God is calling people to go out into all the world and preach the gospel. That's what he's doing now. That's what my ministry try to enhance, people to go out into the world and preach the gospel wherever they may, may be living. Yeshua don't care about all this glorification uh, of flesh, you know? He don't care about that. He want us to obey his will and do his will, you know? Like he told his parents when he was growing up, they say, oh, where's 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 Yeshua? Where's uh, uh, he's doing his father's business? He said, Mother, don't you know I'm doing my father's business? We need to be doing our father's business. You know, every day I look at the news, it's just horrible looking at the news anymore. It just gives you heart attacks and blood, high blood pressure, and everything else. It's so much bad news. Uh, all the uh, people on there, I mean, people killing their children, uh, grand, gam grandparents killing their grandchildren, and vice versa. It's always something going on bad on the news. And so Yeshua say, I come to give you good news. And so the only good news we have is the hope in Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. And I know I was just hearing my brother Joseph Skinner talk about the false Christ. And we are going to have Antichrist. We do have him before us right now. And they are going to have to bring in a, a, a false Messiah, a false Jesus, a false Yeshua, whatever. 
And, you know, they are going to do that because the, the devil is trying to take over the world. He wants people to bow down to the beast in his image and take the chip and take the mark. And this is something we need to stay away from. And we need to be growing in Christ every day, asking him to show us. Because he told us in Matthew 24, do not go in the desert. Do not go in the secret train. Do not go to the secret chambers. Do not, do not, do not. So I'm telling you, his feet won't touch the ground when he come. When he's coming, he's coming with all his holy angels. And, you know, and he will, uh, when um, dead in Christ will rise and those that are alive should be caught up in there to meet him and vice versa. That's what the Bible talk about people. So you really need to go look at Stephen Anderson's uh, uh, video if you didn't. Now, I'm going to repost it today uh, for you to really look at that. And also, I'm going to be reading some of uh, Randall, uh, Randall's stuff today again, attending to my words. Uh, and then also from 256 page, uh, and uh, Maranatha, the Lord is coming. She's talking about the uh, <clears throat> that another Pentecost is coming. And I'm really looking forward to that. When Yeshua pour out all his flesh, all his spirit, I mean, on all flesh, all flesh, whether you're evil, whether you're good, it don't matter. He's going to pour out all flesh. I mean, all his spirit on all flesh, all his spirit, Marna, on all flesh. And then, you know, we'll be able to go into the world and preach the gospel like we never have before. Uh, we'll do exploits, you know, people. And we need to be trusting in him with all our heart, mind, and soul. I was just looking at my cell phone this morning, checking messages. And, and then I have to see this thing, a Buddha come up. Buddha, oh, well, send in your information to learn more about Buddha. And, uh, you know, I don't need to learn about Buddha. The only God is going to save us on this planet is Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, the real Jesus Christ, not the false Jesus Christ. And so, you know, we can't, we can't talk about Islam. We can't talk about Kabbalah. We can't talk about Buddhism. We don't need to talk about Hinduism. We don't need to talk about astrology. We don't need to talk about witchcraft. We don't need to talk about new age and all that foolishness people out there. Oh, I'm an atheist. None of this stuff will save us. None of these things will save us. I'm hoping today and praying today with you always that you will give your life to Jesus Christ right now, the true Messiah. And if you appeal to him, he will appear to you. Let's give your life to him. Say, Father, I died. I know my sins have corrupted me. I need your Holy Spirit to come inside of me. A simple prayer, as it says in Romans 10, 9 and 10. So I'm going to go ahead and show you some pictures today of some old events going on over in uh, the foreign lands. Um, and uh, I'm going to try to talk to you briefly about them as I go along. And then I will get back to some more readings here. And I pray that my computer don't go out. I, this is the second time I'm doing this because I pushed the wrong button or something. So anyway, I'm trying to learn this stuff. This technology is not easy to learn, people, especially when you get to be 60 plus or whatever. But anyway, God is good. God is good. So uh, thank you for my husband's help. He's a very good help in uh, helping me with these things. So let's go here now and look at this um, other picture here. Uh, as you know, this is William, uh, and I want to tell you on the last video, I was going to talk about William. Uh, William uh, is over in um, southeast Uganda, and he is the one that has the laptop in his hand. He just received it here some few months ago from all you wonderful people out there giving offerings. And I know Michael and Sharon was mostly responsible for it. And I thank you so much for it, um, uh, Michael, so much. Michael, he, who's in prison, who I'm asking you to pray for daily, that he'll be released because he the one pretty much helped, uh, he helped this gentleman here get, uh, get his uh, laptop and he's so happy to have it. You can see him there. He's just uh, showing it, um, so happy to have it. And, uh, and I've been talking to him here uh, occasionally online, on and off. And this is him here having a celebration of a birthday, uh, sending a uh, off, small offering to help him with a birthday. He had told me he had never had a birthday in his life. He never knew what a birthday was. He was always sad, you know, when birthdays come around because he never had a birthday. So we gathered a small offering to have him to go have, invite some of his friends over and have a small uh, birthday. And they were sitting here eating and uh, having a few uh, bread and uh, see him there. He's This is him here, William, a good picture of William there. And so I'm just so happy to help him. He's a young evangelist. He go all over in Kenya and 
different parts of Africa, ministering to the youth, the young people. And he talking to the youth about Jesus Christ and about, uh, he said the biggest problem he had with young people is sex problems, you know, like porn and masturbation and people getting into all these things and uh, prostitution and things of that nature. So he go and talk to them about the living word of God and how to get them to uh, repent and, and come to Jesus Christ to save them. And then a lot of them are into drugs and things like that. So I, I really respect him and honor this young man. He's doing a lot over in his district. And um, and so this is now I'm getting over to uh, India again. Uh, this is Raja. You know about Raja. This is Ramaru and an amazing Ramaru and Raja got together. I think last year, uh, Raja traveled from his part of Southeast India up to Southwest India to meet Ramaru and Ramaru and him do ministries in the uh, villages and all over India, giving out Bibles as Bob Barber been helping a lot with that, uh, sending Bibles over to them in their language, in their language, of course. And helping them get Bibles out to the people, blankets and things of that nature. And he also helped Ramaru with a lot of equipment that he didn't have, like computers and different things like that, laptops and computers and projectors and things like that, where they can do the uh, gospel or sh spread the gospel. And this is them again in in, in one of the rooms. So Ramaru do uh, he has a school that he's putting together for Bible students. And when I first met him, I was amazed at all the he didn't hardly have any material before Bob helped him, you know, with Bibles and different things he needed. And he was just sitting there with one or two Bibles and he was just talking to the people in, in their language and, and teaching them about the Bible and the gospel and uh, uh, the things coming on the earth. And and then uh, I started sharing my videos with him and he was really pleased about that too. And so they are very hardworking people. This is Ramaru and his wife. Um, and I'm just saying they're very hardworking people over there in India, very hardworking, uh, his son and his wife here. And, uh, I'm just like wanting you people to start praying for them over there because they really need a lot of help. Now, this is how they rented a car to get some equipment they needed. They, I know this is one of those, um, uh, they put up these big screens, you know, to show the movies on, you know, when they showing the movies to the people about, Christ, uh, evangelism and stuff like that. And that, I know that's what that is. Uh, one of those, uh, polls where they put up the, uh, screen for the projectors and things to show the movies. And they always so uh, sincere with sending in their receipts and, uh, letting people know the money is being used for that purpose only. And this is a sign they made for Bob. You know, they always make signs for Bob and all the givers, so, uh, and then this is another sign he made for Bob and the givers where he got to, when he just received the computers and things. So people, it's just real. Okay. I just want you to know these things are real. Uh, God have associated me with these people. And I tell you, um, I met Ramaru and Roger, just God send them to me. Okay. And then I introduced them to Bob and that's how it goes. And Bob been doing a great work, helping them with materials that I probably can't even do that quickly. As uh, my ministry keep growing, I probably would be able to do more things, but this is uh Ramaru uh, at the baptismal. Now I'll tell you in the certain part of India, Roger told me in certain parts of India, uh, a worse part of India. The northern part of India is the worst part. They have more persecutions up there. And he said the south part of India is more better for evangelism. And so I know that over in Roger's part of India, he telling me they cannot baptize. They cannot put you in water and baptize. Now, where Ramaru is, he's probably way out in some woods somewhere in India. And he that this is a a lake they found out. So he's baptizing this guy. And so they do a lot of different things in different parts of India. And uh, I just praise God for him though. And this is him at another one of his meetings. He have gathered the people for a, a meeting here in, uh, in India, uh, Ramaru. So uh, let me see what else I have here. Um, this is Ramaru. They, they, they take all the they take all the Bibles that come in and everything that come in. They, they have to carry them the best way they can. They're motorcycles, uh, little scooter cars, and then they rent cars. Like you saw him renting that other car. 
to get them to get things around because they don't have transportation people. So that's why I say it's just a real sacrifice that these people make. You know, they make a real sacrifice to take the gospel into all the world. And so I really just want all of us to start doing our part for Yeshua. And now I'm going over here to Raja. This is Raja. <clears throat> and he been, I think this is Raja when he went to, uh, they had a hundred hours of prayer or something like that. They had a hundred hours of prayer and they get together with other ministers in, in India and they all pray and fast for a certain number of days. Uh, so that's what that was about. And this is Roger when he got his new vehicle that uh, that Bob Barber is responsible for and raising a fundraiser for him to get this new vehicle where he can go out into all parts of India, all in those high ridges and places and high mountains and mountain mountainous places that people can't walk by foot. He can go there now with his vehicle. So uh, they bought this one. It's not brand, brand new, but it's almost brand new. But it's, it was a used one. They got raised funds for him to receive. And that's his beautiful wife. Uh, I love her so much, uh, Anita. And so they all go out and to do the, the, they are all working for God's purpose, honey. They they don't put, waste time. They do a lot of work just for the ministry. Uh, and this is him giving blankets out to the people. Uh, and a lot of blankets they have out that, that come in from the contributions and then, uh, another lady with a blanket and so, and then the, the Bibles, I told you, they, that you, uh, Bob send Bibles, uh, uh, directly to them to give out to all the people. So that's really what I want to show you today. Just some more pictures of that. And I, I'll come back and, and wait a minute, some few more on here. Yeah, I thought it was. Okay. Hold on a minute. <clears throat> That's Roger there when I first met Roger. That's when he was on Libar, uh, living in black and white uh, social media before Facebook got really popular. And I met him on Libar, and that's what he looked like, just a simple guy. He had a simple Bible. He was out in the, they sitting out in the woods and in the villages and, and on the grounds with their blankets and just having church right there on the grounds and things like that. So I thought that was really amazing. I loved how they are so um, humble and, and just really want to do what the Lord have called them to do. And let me see what this one is. Okay, now I got to go back to my pictures. I got to pull them down or something. They're not going down. Oh, oh here they are. Okay. Um, okay. And this is Roger again, sitting in his car when he first got it. And uh, let's see here. Uh, pictures, why are my pictures not coming up here right? Okay. And another picture of an Indian man reading his Bible. Uh, one of the Bibles that just was given to him. And also... This is this is a better picture of Roger and his family. We've been talking to them about four years plus. People, it's just wonderful. I told you that the girls will sing to me on uh, on Skype, sing little Jesus songs to me, and his wife is uh, she talks to me occasionally too. Uh, she don't like to uh, she don't have good English, so she her husband mostly talk to me, but she get on there and do the best she can and talk to me in uh, in English a little bit. And I just love them. I just love them so much. It's like they like family to, to me and my husband. They like family. So uh, my husband have mentored them a lot, you know, with different ministries and uh, things they need to learn about. He send materials to them to learn and uh, grow and things of that nature. So uh, let me see what this is. This is another picture of one of the villages out, way out, I think. I think I got this picture from Ramaru. And... Um, and then so we have, um, let me see what this one is here, the jungle. Yeah, that's one of the uh, villages in the jungle parts. And then we have here, um, yeah, another one. You can see how the villages are just not, you know, that great uh, out way out in the dumps where they live and Roger take the time and they go out in these places, people to give out books all over blankets to the people, uh, very minimal, uh, things they have. 
And so uh, we just want to thank you for all the support you've given us. And we want to just continue to let this, this ministry grow because it's just so many people that need, have needs. And tomorrow when I come back, I'm going to talk about Rebecca from Kenya. She's living in Texas right now. And Source Outreach Ministries, Sandra in California, the one I showed you the other day who have the videos of her ministry, women's ministry. She's been helping Rebecca right now get the right contacts where she can take care of her orphans over in Kenya. And so this is what all we've been doing, people. This is what all we've been doing. And this is another gentleman I want to talk about too when I come back. And his name is uh, Pastor Udar. Udar. Udar is amazing to me too. I've been knowing him about three years now. And I'm telling you, when I first met him on my uh, social media site, I was talking to him, praying with him. Uh, and he was telling me how destituted he was and he didn't have no, he was about to give up on Jesus Christ, but to walk away from his calling, walk away from his calling because he was so distressed. And I had to talk to him really and give him a lot of counsel that he can't get distressed over the things going on all around us. And he did, he needed to just rededicate himself and and I start uh, helping him a little bit with offerings and different things to help. Bob, Barbara was helping him too with Bibles where he could start giving them out to the people in his district. And so, you know, this is about, uh, this is about Yahweh's people, all of us working together, people. And that's why I said, it's not about titles. It's not about, oh, it's about me, 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 I, I, I. All of us are in this together. We need to be working together, helping one another, doing what we can while we can do it because time is running out. Time is definitely running out, people. So I just, I'm so thankful for the opportunity to be in the vineyard, to be with Yeshua and letting him know that we we love him like we love him so much. And I know he's soon coming. Uh, Happy First Fruits was wonderful, but that's not the one I want to come up here. That was wonderful. Uh, Happy First Fruits was wonderful, Yeshua. So this is just one of the two more pictures here, and I'm going to go over to my reading material. And that's why I told you, this is me in India, <laughs> me in India on the screen uh, and the little kids are sitting around watching the movies and, and I know they probably don't know what I'm saying, but, uh, they just excited about the movies. But I know that Ra, um, Ram, Ramaru, he always, uh, you know, have to try to explain it to them, but, and they, and might interpret it, I mean, interpret it for them. But I, I'm sure that uh, they think it's exciting to see this person on screen. They don't look at, they don't know what a movie is. They don't go to movies, okay? So they are very excited about the anything they can see on a screen. They probably get real excited about it. I know Ramaru was telling me they get excited about it. So um, I think this is all I have today, people. And one more thing, yeah, my brother, <laughs> Hallelujah, my brother, my brother. This is my brother from Uganda. Um, Dr. Lamec, uh, Dr. Lamec, and he is a doctor. He used to be a dentist actually. And the Lord called him into the healing ministry. And he is over here in the United States right now, uh, going from church to church. Um, I didn't, get, I was, I, I wish I could have hosted him this year to see him in live and in person, but I am going to see him one day because he's in Boston, all over the place, Arizona. He goes all over the place in America. He's God has blessed him to uh, get his, uh, he's working on his paper, his papers, the way he can do live in the United States and go back and forth to, in, uh, to Africa. And he got a church over in Uganda and, and cap, cap, cap. Capula, K-A-M-P-A-L-A, -A -A, the same place where uh, William live at. And so I'm so happy <laughs> that he got what's behind the New World Order. And he was telling me he got it. And then he uh, he uh, said, Martin, I got the books. And and I sent him a bunch of the books. And he and he they put them in a suitcase. And they send them over to Uganda so uh, at his congregations where the people could get these books. And I'm telling you, people, this book is a fabulous book. It really is. We need to know about the other Jesus in this book, the Roman Jesus, who's who they looking forward to coming, as I call him, the Roman Jesus. Some people call him the other Jesus. I call him the Roman Jesus because they trying to get the whole world to one after the beast. And, and we need to know that Yeshua say by their fruits, we will know them. And those people that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus Christ, are the ones that's going to raise uh, 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 
wow, raise uh, and like uh, I like Jonathan Kahn like to say, raise a a, a banner and, and really be walking and talking for Yeshua and going into all the world and preach the gospel. So that's what we need to be doing. So I just had to show that picture. I love that picture so much. He sent it to me and said, Marner, I got the book. I love the book. I love the book. So anyway, uh, we are going to come back and I'm going to do some more, um, uh, pictures. I'm going to go back to my fishes of men and I'm going to start preaching here. Excuse me. Uh, I'm just, I'm just so happy, uh, about the videos today, people. So, uh, thanks for watching. And I'm going to go over here to, uh, I'm going to go over here to uh, attend to my words by Randall and just read something here. Read something here from Randall. And uh, then I'm going to go to Maranatha, the Lord is coming. <clears throat> okay, Maranatha, the Lord is coming. And also, I was before I get to that, I was going to say Dr. Lamack there, he is... Uh, he is uh, got a real gift of healing, and God showed him some mag mag magnificent things. And so I'm going to come back and talk about him a little later to give you some more information on this man because he's very, he's God has just showed him some magnificent things with healing. Um, he was talking to me the other day how the Lord's showing him now about migraine headaches and uh, how the Lord's showing him how these nerves and vessels all fit together. And it's funny, see, coming from the dentistry, Yeshua showed him all these things, how they work with the body, you know. he Oh, he's fascinating. And I have to come back and show you and read you some of his history, okay? So next time I come. Uh, so here at uh, Attend to My Words by Randall J. Brewer, he says here, the choice is yours. The choice is yours. Will you climb that mountain or won't you? You can't ask God to fix your marriage if you're not willing to take the climb to fix it. If you want God to do something for you, then you will have to go on a journey with him. It's a journey to the top of the mountain, a journey that would take you above the clouds. Most people don't believe for big dreams because the climb is too difficult for them. With big dreams come big trials, and most people can't handle the scrapes and the bruises of such a climb. They are not willing to pay the price that comes with every big dream. Oh, uh, this is just amazing information because uh, it's true, people. I remember Roger again. I have to get back to him because he just has such fascinating testimonies. And he remember telling me, I remember him telling me and my husband about how he was around the village's people. And he was, uh, the, you know, this big snake, this big cobra, this big cobra snake came and it was standing up, you know, like cobras do. And it, it struck Roger. Okay. And so he said the people was watching him and they're watching him. They, they looking for him to die. They looking for him to die. Cause they know when you get bit by a big cobra, you would die almost instantly. And so he said, God healed him. It, it mis it, God healed him instantly. And he, he got up and walked around and, and, and people just amazed and astonished. And so they started coming to Jesus Christ. They started asking him about Jesus. And so he led a lot of people to Jesus that moment, that day. And so this is what, you know, Yeshua is just awesome. He really is. So that's why I say he will protect us. We have no fear and he will, he can do everything in our mountains of life. You know, everything we have in problems with in our life. And we would just go to him and, 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 and talk to him and, and talk to him. I told you, I couldn't hardly get out of bed in 2009. I was on the edge of the bed. I couldn't get out. I couldn't move. My husband had to lift me to the bathroom. I couldn't get out. My back was in such bad shape. And I know it's not perfect today, but I am getting around. I'm walking still, people. I have my walker some days when I want to go out for long old little, little walks. But, you know, I could have been just in bed for good, for life. I'm just saying God is amazing God. And then when I think about him, when I was working at my job, my last job, and I fell, and and I was trying to figure out what that was about because all my life I had wanted a state job. Oh, man, I can get into the state job systems and and have good benefits and have this and have that. And, and then the Lord told me, no, I want you to do my ministry. So now I know what my calling is. I know he wanted me to do the ministry. So that's why these things sometimes happen in our life for a reason. And we need to be coursing in that reason sometime when these things come against us. Why, Lord? Why, Lord? Why me? What's going on, Father? And he will show you what it is, okay? He will show you what it is. Maybe it's something out there he wants you to do for the kingdom, and I'm sure he does. He said, many are called and few are chosen, okay? So I hope that you choose life and not death today. 
and come and let the Lord use you, use you in his vineyard. Okay, let's get continued here. Uh, most people don't believe for big dreams because the climb is too difficult for them. With big dreams come big trials, and most people can't handle the scrapes and bruises of such a climb. They are not willing to pay the price that comes with every big dream. I agree with that. They prefer to camp at the base of the mountain where they think they is safe. Little do they realize that one day they will bow down before God and be asked why they didn't make the climb. God wants you to climb your mountain and there is a price to pay for not doing so. You can pay the price now or you can pay the price later. The choice is yours. Don't hesitate another moment. Put one foot in front of the other and trust God to lead you every step of the way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you get closer to the top of your mountain, you will have to limit the amount of talking you do. You must save your oxygen, so don't talk to people you shouldn't be talking to. Don't get caught up in the conversations with people who can't help you get to where you're going. Not only will you have to overcome the doubt in your life, you will have to overcome their doubt as well. Hallelujah. Isn't that true? Those people you hang around. I think all the one of my, the Robert, Robert, Robert Hollis always used to say that too with the business media world. He'll say if you hang around, you, you, become, you become what you hang around. You become what you hang around, which is really true. We become who we hang around. If we're hanging around people that gossip all day long, if we're hanging around people that uh, just want to party all the time, if we're hanging around people that just want to poke, pot dope and smoking you know and we, we know we, we got to end up doping and smoking too along with them i know people we that's the kind of uh, human beings that flesh is weak what did Yeshua said he said the flesh is weak but the spirit is willing the spirit is willing and the flesh is weak we don't need to be around people we don't need to hang around we do not need to be so he's right here not only will you have to overcome the doubt in your life you have to overcome they doubt as well Besides, you shouldn't be talking when you're supposed to be climbing. You won't reach the place God wants you to be if you're always stopping to talk to people you shouldn't be talking with. There is a place you're supposed to be, so don't let these people keep you from your miracle. Don't allow them to take you down the mountain when you're trying to go up the mountain. You need to stop talking and keep climbing. When you stop, the people behind you have to stop as well because you're blocking their way. Not only do you want to go higher in life, you want to help others go higher also. I just love that so much. I just love that so much, so much, so much. So I'll just read one more little section and then I get over here to Mary not the Lord is coming. The conversations you have will either help you to go up the mountain or leave you stranded on the ledge. Be careful who you talk to on your climb. If there are questions in your mind, don't talk to people who don't have the answers. Talk to people who are well grounded in the word and allow them to help you take one more step up that mountain. Hallelujah. That's why I love it when people get down in my ministry. Oh, uh, we put them on the email. Pray for this person. Pray for this person. Pray for this person. And you know, you need to do that. Send in your prayers and call me for the, un uh, send your prayers in and also request the spiritual warfare prayers where you can keep the enemy a gate, keep him away from you people. Okay. Yeshua said, if we would flee from the devil, he would flee from us. Absolutely. So it says here, um, oh, I love this roundo. I love this so much. Talk to people who are well grounded in the word and allow them to help you take one more step up that mountain. You are on a mission. You are on a mission and you must make everything and everyone who is not helping you get out of your way. Remove the roadblocks and do it immediately. No lottering allowed. Talking not permitted. Also, don't be satisfied until you reach the top of your mountain. Don't allow yourself to feel satisfied because you climb halfway. Satisfaction may cause you to ponder going back down the mountain if you see that rocks and boulders are blocking your path. No gird up your strength and climb over those big rocks that stand in your way. You will come too far to back up now. Hallelujah. So when I come back, I'll finish this, okay, about how intimidating the race can be. But we must face the challenge. Because Yeshua said, greater he that is in us than he that is in the world. All right. Hallelujah. So let's go here real quick. Time is really running. I don't even know what time 
I've been talking. <laughs> I don't care today. I don't care today. So much good things here to say today. Another, another Pentecost coming on page 256. I will make them and the places round about my heel a blessing. And I would cause the show shower and I would cause the shower to come down in his season. There shall be showers of blessings. Ezekiel 34, 26 under the figure of the early and the latter rain that falls in the Eastern lands at seed time and harvest. The Hebrew prophets foretold the bestowal of spiritual grace and extra extraordinary measure upon God's church. The outpouring of the spirit in the days of the apostles was the beginning of the early of uh, former reign and glorious was the result. But near the close, but near the close of earth's harvest, a special bestowal of spiritual grace is promised to prepare the church for the coming of the Son of Man. This outpouring of the Spirit is likened to the falling of the latter rain. The great work of the gospel is not to close with less manifestation of the power of God than marked its opening. The prophecies which were fulfilled in the outpouring of the former rain at the opening of the gospel are again to be fulfilled in the latter rain at its close. Servants of God with their faces lighted up and shining with the holy consecration will hasten from place to place to proclaim the message from heaven. By thousands of voices all over the earth, the warning will be given. Miracles will be wrought. The sick will be healed and signs and wonders will follow the believers. Hallelujah. 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 Satan also works with lying wonders. This is why we have to be careful about this false Messiah coming people. Satan will all, Satan also works with flying wonders, even bringing down fire from heaven in the sight of man. Revelation 13, 13. Thus the inhabitants of the earth will be brought to take their stand. The message will be carried not so much by argument as by the deep conviction of the spirit of God. The arguments have been presented. The seed has been sown and now it will spring up and bear fruit. Now the rays of light penetrate everywhere. The truth is seen in its clearness and the honest children of God sever the bands which have held them. Family connections, church relations are powerless to stay them now. Truth is more precious than all besides, notwithstanding the agencies combined against the truth, a large number take their stand upon the Lord's side. Hallelujah. That's right. A lot of people out there keeping Sunday, uh, doing false worship into all these crazy things, Hinduism, uh, Buddhism, Catholicism, all the things I always say every day. And God's going to call them on the our side, people. So keep preaching, keep reaching. Don't give up. We are here to spread the gospel. That's what we're supposed to be doing. So if you need the books, write me, What's Behind the New World Order, uh, Finding Peace Within. It's another book look by Bible Answers and Questions. And then also... Um, uh, the, the one on the, the angels, who are the angels, we have false angels, we have bad angels, good angels, God have his angels protecting us at all times, and then the perfect storm is coming, which I love right now, because that's what we're heading, wall economic collapse, tomorrow decay, is America headed for Armageddon, oh wow people, we are really got war on on, North Korea, uh, we got Iran, uh, Russia, China, all in our backyard. So we need to be praying really daily, keeping the prayers over your families, keeping the spiritual warfare prayers over your families. If you want a copy, just write me, Marner. I want a copy of the spiritual warfare prayers. If you want me to put you in your pre my prayer box, I can put you in my prayer box. Just send me your name and I'll put you in my prayer box. So I'm going to go away now because I don't know what time it is. I really don't. So uh, when we're doing screening uh, pictures, you can't see the screen to see what time it is. So uh, <clears throat> let me just say a short prayer with you, and I'll let you go. Uh, Father, just come and be with us today, the people watching, Father. You're such an awesome God, Yeshua. I just thank you so much for all the ministers and to all the world, Father, all your people preaching and reaching and teaching, Father. We just love you so much for all what you're doing for us, Lord. We just know that soon and very soon you will come, Lord. So I ask that you come now and be with every person watching, Father. I ask that you chase them with holy angels, Father, helping them to make the right choice, Father, to choose life and not death, Father, that help them to know that 
that you are the only one can save them, Lord. You're the only one, Father. You're the only one, Elohim. Our only, 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 only Elohim. Our only Messiah. And we just look forward to your soon coming. So we ask that you supply all of their needs according to your riches and glory in Yeshua HaMashiach, whether physical, mentally, physically, physical, mentally, spiritually, I'm sorry. And Father, I just thank you so much for your love for us in every way. You're such an awesome, awesome God. And we ask that you continue to be with the people in the vineyards all over in Africa, China, uh, 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 Pakistan, uh, we, uh, people all over the world, Father. India, all over the place, you have your people scattered, Father. America, you have your people scattered. You even send in people from Africa to America and from all the other foreign lands, to America, Father, to straighten us out because we need to know that we need to repent in this country, Father. We got so many things going on. We got all these people wanting to save you, uh, wanting the president to fix it, want this person to fix it. And you are the only one can fix it, Father. You are the only one going to bring true peace, Father. So we just thank you so much for your love for us in every way. I ask that you just be with every person on a piece of paper right now, every person, every man, every every woman, every boy, every girl, every bloodline in the prayer box today. I lift them up to you again, Father. Just touch them. Supply all of their needs, Father. I thank you so much for helping the children who was uh, down and out, Father, the seven-year-old. Uh, we thank you for all the prayers that's been answered. Uh, we thank you for Diana being better. We thank you for uh, Tammy and her family. We just thank you for all the prayers going out today. We thank you for all your people, Father, all your people in the vineyard. We just ask that you help us, Father, to sound the trumpet. Sound the trumpet and not give up, not to get walk away from the mountain, Father. Not walk away from my calling, Father. Just help us, Lord, right now. And we just love you. We thank you so much. We bind Satan and all his evil angels below, beyond, beneath, mentioned and unmentioned, known and unknown. We bind our evil spirits on assignment against this video, against the people watching. And we just ask that you come now, Lord. Come quickly. And we ask that you help us, Father. I bind and loose us permanently from all these spirits. I speak a curse and destruction upon all these seedings, works, plans, activities, Activities, blueprints, plots, plans, designs, traps, wiles, snares, and assignments against them or me in any way, manner, or form, and through any individual, any organization, any adversary, a would-be adversary from this day, any day past, or any day to come, and we bind permanently, loose us permanently from these, and uproot all these seedings, works, and plans, and activities, and curse them at their roots by trust and faith, call them canceled, nullified, never come to pass, and render them no effect, all in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, the true Messiah, and we thank you, and we ask it in his name, amen and amen. So so I'm going to go away now, people. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I think it's going to be like 42 minutes. So I just saw the, I did see the minute thing on top. Oh, that's good to know. So thank you so much for watching. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. God, God bless you all out there. Shalom, shalom. Bye-bye.